Um, so let's work this out together. Let's make sure that if you're, if you're not doing it mentally very well, then do it actually on the paper. This, what I'm about to tell you. Understand that every x is inside parentheses. Okay? It's just that those parentheses are not written down, they're implied. So let's take every x out of the parentheses, like this, and we'll find out if I did something wrong or if you did something wrong. Okay, so first we're going to put negative 3 in there, negative 3. So now we're going to square a number, which means multiply by a number by itself. What number are you going to multiply by itself? Negative 3. Negative 3 times negative. Not 3 times 3, right? Negative 3 times negative 3. What's negative 3 times negative 3? Positive 9. Okay. Negative 10 times negative is positive. All right. Uh, plus a 4 times a negative 3. What's 4 times negative 3? Negative 12. So plus a negative 12. Plus 3. So minus 12 plus 3. Let's see. This is uh, 12 minus 12, 0. Next, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, minus 8, plus 3, negative 4, plus 3, negative 1. Zero. zero squared plus four times zero is zero. So we just three. like plus three. Zero plus three. These are going to be very similar. It's just we're going to plug in positive two and positive three. So really the only difference is this, this number is going to be positive rather than negative. So we're going to get four, still positive four, plus eight plus three. We get 12 plus three, 15. This is 3 squared plus 4 times 2, or sorry, 3, not 3, not 2, plus 3. 9 plus 12 plus 3, 24. So how would you graph it? Because uh, that's what I was, that was, that was what I was wondering. Okay, that's the question. Sometimes our graph isn't going to be big enough to plot the points that we have. Recognizing that it's off your graph is good to, to, to not try and put it on there to recognize that it's way off the charts and to not graph it is fine. Okay. To try and put it on a graph that you know it doesn't fit on is not good. So if you recognize that it's off the graph, that also is an indication you understand what's going on. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's plot all the points. Zero, negative three. Or sorry, negative three, zero. Negative three, zero. There's a point there. Negative two, negative one. 0, 3, 2, we could get 15, it's not too hard, we got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, but after that, to go 3, 24, it's just, it's just too big. So how do you make a U? Yeah. Well, that's a good question, okay. If I don't know what the rest of the graph looks like, how can I find out? Pick your graph. No, you said bigger graph. Bigger graph? Yeah, that was my name. They give us a bigger graph. Yeah. So it would be less confusing. Because it doesn't make sense on there because you were estimating. Estimating what? Well, like 24. Okay. Well, everyone calm down. The goal of the questions is not to be as unconfusing as possible, especially on homework problems, okay? I want to challenge you to think harder, okay? I want you to say, well, 324 isn't on the graph, and I want you to recognize that. I want you to have confidence in saying that, okay? Uh, I want you to recognize if there's ever a bad question, it's a bad question. This isn't a bad question, it's just trying to see, do you recognize that this, 
isn't going to show up on the graph very easily and that we should just not include it. And if I want to get more of an idea of what the graph looks like, if I don't plot this point, I have just these three points. What's it going to look like? How do I find out more about the graph and what it looks like? Well, if you have, um, I was just going to say, if you have Let's say I didn't plot that point, I just have these three. Right? I know it's supposed to look like a U, it's called a parabola, but you, you don't, and that's, that would be absolutely fine. How will we get more of an idea of what this graph looks like? I do need bigger graph. It doesn't have to be bigger. Well, okay, so let's say we got a bigger graph. Why would we get a bigger graph? Because you can add some plot. <laughs> Is it the only point that there exists and we can only plot points that I give you x values no, to plug in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're trying to get you're, you're thinking about getting a bigger graph because you're trying to get more of what? What's that? Points. More points. That is exactly the point. We need more points. Okay. If we if we want to know what a graph looks like, we find more points. That's kind of a silly thing to say because really, what is a graph? Points. Endless points. points. How many points? Infinity. 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 Uh, yes, a graph is an infinite an amount of points. So if you don't know what the graph looks like, if you don't know that it looks like a U or a line or whatever shape it's supposed to look like, the shape is it's not even really a shape. It is what all of the points start to look like after you graph all trillion, billion, million of them. Okay? okay. So if you want to know what the graph looks like, we need more points. Do I have to go over to 3 and up to 24? No. no. How about if I put in... One, okay. that didn't happen, we put in one. How about if I put in negative one, negative four, negative five? Okay, if we put one in there, that's a pretty easy thing to do. One squared is one, four times one is four, so one plus four is five, plus three is eight. So you can change it? What, change what? The math problem. This thing? Yeah. I didn't change it. No, no like it's just adding four into it, he's adding one number. Can do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what this thing is waiting for. It's just waiting for input, so it can give you output. Okay. So it's waiting for you to give it one or any input you want: half, three quarters, negative four and three six, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so one should give you eight. You just found. Put anything you want in there. Extend the table until you get points to the to the degree that you feel comfortable graphing the shape or connecting the points. Okay, let's uh, do negative one. Put negative one again. That's going to be negative one squared plus four times negative one plus three. Okay. What's negative one squared? The negative one's in the parentheses. Yes, negative one times negative one, right? Because the negative one's in the parentheses here. We're going to multiply negative 1 by itself. So we get 1. And then 4 times negative 1, that's going to give us a minus 4. Plus 3 is 0. 1 minus 4 plus 3 is 0. So we extend the table even more. Negative 1 gives us a 0. Negative 1 gives us a 0. Well, the more plot points we plot, the more we start to understand that it look like a U. Yeah, Let's talk about a little bit. Instead, yeah, not a B. We don't want our graphs to be pointy. Yeah. Yes? I still don't understand like, how, why you're adding numbers when I got one for eight. How I got one and eight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One is the number that I put in for X. Right? Put one here, put one here. Did you just randomly put in a number? Yeah. It's a function. You put something this in there, you gotta get something out. Right, you put something no, in there. I like that. that. I like that. <laughs> um, okay. I know that. No, you still have a question? What's your question? Well, I'm How did I know to do that? Well, just why. Why 
why would why would you why you not do the ad right there? Yeah, yeah, just like a bigger one. one. Yeah, like what's why do you need to do you know? Why can't we just like plot <laughs> twenty four and then be done? Oh, because that's yeah, not. See, look, look at my face. Okay, that that's it's got some incorrectness. You got some wrong outputs there. Yeah, no, but it's still could just make it bigger. Yeah. Yes, but it's not necessary. You could do a lot of things. Right, but you don't have to do that. What you do need to do is graph, draw the graph of this function. What is a function? A something that you put in and you get it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you put something in, it's all calmed down. Let's not worry about what's the right way to do the problem, why is it done this way. Let's just talk about what we're talking about. We're talking about a function. Okay. Something you put something into and get something out of. And every time I put something in, I should get just one thing out. Right. Okay. Put something in, I guess. Well, the question was, how do you know it looks like this U thing? Okay. Well. Fair question, because without that, what, uh, 324 point way up there, and maybe even without this 215, we had this point, this point, and this point, which is a tough assignment. Like, how do I know what that graph is supposed to look like? If I don't know, I need to start thinking about what are, when I put this in, what will I get out? When I put this in, what will I get out? And it's, at some point, we can say, I don't need to do the work anymore. I can see that if I put something like negative 10 in there, it's going to be way up here. It's going to be way down here. And I can see that by the behavior of the graph. Okay? Could you just hold on just a second because I want to make one point here. Let's look here. What, what does this point tell us about the function? What does this point tell us about the function? Or at least three. Now tell us something really specific about the, about the function. What's a function? You put a vending machine. A vending machine. You put something in, you get something out. What does this point tell us about putting something in and getting something out? Putting zero or three. Right, you put in zero, you get out three. How do you know that? Because x is traditionally the thing that we're putting in, that's the yeah. input, and y is the output. What's the input and output of this point right here? Zero, three. Zero, three. It's located at x is zero and y is three. x is zero and y is three tells us you put in zero for x, you get out three for y. Is that true? No. No? I had an itch on my head. I didn't have anything. <coughs> I didn't have anything. I didn't <coughs> Okay. Okay. What does this point tell us about the function? Put in one, you get out eight. Okay. Now here's what the u part is. Well, here's what it is. If I were to go in between these points, like say at x is a half, not x is zero and not x is one, but x is a half. What kind, of in, what kind of output do you think I would get, just to guess? In between zero and one. Between zero and so one? Like Wait, I'm in, it's, this is hard because I'm not really writing any of this down. I'm putting in one half, what kind of output do you think I'll get? Which one of these is the output? Three. Three is the yeah. output. I put in zero, I get out three. So I put in a half. Oh, one point five. So Half is 0.5. You think you'll get out 1.5? Or not six. You think you'll get like six? Yeah. Mm, so if you see my paper right there, like the little, I did the 20, I just dropped the 24. Wait, no. That's a delicious question. Hey, this one? Yeah. 24 is not there. Oh, yeah. So no, if I did, like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
choose to try and find, some of the points are going to be off. So you're going to have to re-choose to choose something else that gives you an idea of what the graph looks like. So back to this guy right here. I put in one half. I've had a couple of people say, I'm guessing around six. Why are you guessing around six? Well, I don't know. I just like, oh, put it in zero and you get out. Yeah, it's just yeah. Out. Okay. You get out six. Get out. So if I were to graph that, I would go 0.5 and up to 6. Now keep in mind, it's just a guess Mikhail's making. I think Dylan had the same guess. Yeah, it's like multiples. It's like multiples? Yeah. Like 0 is to 3 is 1 half is to 6. Uh, okay. There's a relationship there. It seems to fit a pattern that we're noticing, right? Yeah, like 1 would be to 9 converts to 8. Okay. So this, and what the rule is, is, is this right here, right? Yeah. The rule for finding what the output is, is that rule right there, right? Mm -hmm. Destiny? Should we um, change this on our graph or just like, keep the same, like, rate it back? Since you're telling us how to do it. You should put whatever it is on, on your own homework that helps you remember what we're talking about, OK? Because I don't, if it's right or wrong when I get it, that's not what I'm looking for in the homework. For, that, for work, right? And this is this is important work. If you understand what the function is or the graph is, right? I think my guess is if I put in one half, I'll get out six. That's a guess. I might be wrong, right? Should I be wrong about that? I could be wrong. Probably are wrong. But that's okay. Now, if I were to guess that if I put in one half, I'll get out thirteen. What do you think about that guess? What's that? You think 13? You think that is right? Let's look here. When you put in 0, we get out 3. Put in 0, we get out 3. When you put in 1, we get out 8. So if you put in something in between 0 and 1, you can get something between 3 and 8. Because that seems, that seems to be the pattern. Right? This is what the drawing the U-shape is all about. It's just guessing based on the pattern that we have so far. That's what it's all about. Okay? If I were to put in 0.75, do you think I would get something uh, higher than this point? Like up here somewhere? Or lower? If I put in 0.75. Putting one half in there, I think I get something like this. I think it would be higher. I think it would be higher because yeah. I'm putting in a number that's bigger than one half. And it seems like the, the outputs are getting bigger. And so I think I would get something like maybe right there. I put in one fourth. I think, well, it's not going to be that high, but it's gonna, I think it's going to be higher than three. This would definitely be my yeah. guess somewhere right there. there. Yeah. If I were to put in something uh, like this x, I think I'd probably get something right there. I think if I were to take all the time to, to put in everything between 0 and 1, I found all of the outputs, and then I plotted all those points. I think I would start to get a bunch of points following this pattern. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's all drawing that shape is about. It's, it's really drawing an infinite number of points 
really, really fast. We're just going to draw this little curvy thing where we think all the points would land if we were to land, if we were to plot all of the points that we possibly could. How many points can you plot between 0 and 1? Infinite, 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 um, I remember when I had my raise, oh, okay. Cameron, for, uh, mm -hmm. if you would have just done negative 3, negative 2, 0, and 2, yep. uh, could you have drawn the, just that? And would that be right? Uh, at this point, yes. Uh, I would say that that would be right. We want to get beyond that. But yeah, I mean, from, the, from what you know, if you just had this, was this one? Or this one? There's this one, and this one, and this one. That one, that one, that one. If you were to just draw a nice little curve between those three, that'd be fine. Okay. I'm going to start to think a little bit more than that as, as we move on, but we just started doing this. Right? And based on the information you have, that's what we know. But I do want you to understand that when you draw the graph, all you're doing is guessing what the rest of the outputs are going to be, where all the other points are. Why is it pretty so fidgety? Where are we supposed to be? No, I mean, like it seems like there's some more people are going. Yeah, we were supposed to be released 10 minutes ago, but I don't know what's going on. Ha ha. <laughs> we're supposed to be on the bus in five minutes. Never but had anybody oh, well, left. Maybe uh, the bus broke down. I've never had not I've never not had an announcement. I don't know. People are going. People are going. Yeah, yeah, people are leaving. I said that. For volleyball. Yeah, there are more people. Do you play volleyball? I'm not joking. No, that was just not people. No one has ever been left behind in a classroom because the teacher didn't let them go. I have never, in this is my fifth year, not had them announce that people are supposed to leave. Okay. So I haven't, I don't remember getting a, an email about it. Okay, I'm sure that it's in there somewhere. But you will not get left behind. Let's use the time that we are here to learn what we asked a question about. So, now, I know that if I put in negative 1, I'll get 0. And again, if I put in 0, I'll get out 3. If I put in negative 1 half, about how much do you think you'll get out of the function if you put in negative 1 half? Do you think, if I put in negative 1 half, would you believe if we got negative 10 out of that? Uh, take a look at the graph. Would you believe if you got negative 10? When you put in negative one half, no. There's a point. No. If I went to negative one half and then I go down here, no. no. Why not? Because that's just ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? That's uh, ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Doesn't go with the the, the inputs the and outputs we've been finding. Right. right. What would your the flow? It doesn't go with the flow of the outputs we've been finding. Right. We found that 0 gives us 3, and negative 1 gives us 0. So for negative 1 half to give us negative 10, it doesn't really fit the flow. Yeah. And functions do have a flow when you look at their output. If we were to follow the flow, where would you think that the output would be if I put in negative 1 half? Um, about negative 6. About what? Around 0. A bit higher than 0. Or 6 and 1. 6. When I put in negative 1, when I put in negative 1, I get out 0. When I put in 0, I get out 3. What do you think? If I were to put in negative 1 half, do you think I would get 6? Six? Yeah, because that lines up, too. What do you think right there? Lines up with what? Like positive 6. Like, x is 0.5 and y is 6. Okay. It lines up with the, lines up with the flow. What? The flow of what? Because it matches on the other side? Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying negative point? Say negative one half. You put negative oh, one half in. I, never mind, man. I thought. I mean, there is kind of some symmetry to that if I kind of match it to that side. But think what that, what that means. I put in zero and I get out three. 
I put in negative one, I get out zero, but somehow, for some reason, when I put in negative one half, I spike up to six. No, that's not what I'm saying now. Okay, you're not saying that, what are you saying? I was thinking positive half. Oh, positive one half, okay. Yeah. I'm talking about negative one half. Well, it seems like we get something right there, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and if I put in negative three-fourths, it seems like the closer I get to negative one, the outputs are going to get closer and closer to zero. Right? They're going to come down, 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 down mm -hmm. to zero. Right. So if I put in negative three-fourths, they're going to be a little bit bigger than zero when I get my output. But in negative point nine, it's, you know, I can't even distinguish from the other dot because the other dot is so big. All the points, <laughs> all the points that I get are going to land on this curve here. Right? Right. Yes. And as I connect these points, all I'm doing is guessing where the outputs are going to be. When I put in negative one and a half, I think I'm going to get something of between zero and negative one. So when I put in negative one, I get out zero. And when I put in negative two, I get negative one. So I'm thinking that my outputs, when I put in something between negative one and negative two, are going to be somewhere in here. And then I see that I get some output over here. When I put in negative three, I get out zero. So they, I must start to get some outputs that come from negative one up towards zero. And if that's what you put, then that's fine. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's fine. Good graph. We know that there's a point at 2, 15, and then at 3, where's the y value? 24. 24. Then 3, get out 24. Right. What if I put in 4? Do you think it would be bigger than 24? Probably. It seems yeah, to fit the pattern. It seems to fit the flow. Yep, yep, yep. Right? So probably my graph just will. Excuse the interruption. Please release the C-squad volleyball team. Please release But let's keep concentrating on this. Right? Remember that when I move over to some x value on the x-axis, where I put the point vertically represents what? Come over here to negative what, seven. Okay, go over to negative seven. And then I go to put, I gotta put the point, right? I gotta plot the point, which means I need to go up or down. Mm -hmm. When I choose to go up here or down here, what does that y value represent? Uh, uh, positive just, negative. Okay, yes, yeah, positive or negative. What's negative I choose? Negative means it's down, positive means it's up. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. 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 But remember that I've chosen to go to negative 7 specifically. When I choose where the y value is. That means negative x. Negative x. Yes, a negative x value. Negative 7 for x. Let's say this. How will I figure out, if I want to know where that point is supposed to go, up here or down here, where is it supposed it's to go? It's zero. Yes, but I'm pretty sure it's not at zero. Y is zero. How do I figure out what the y is, Drew? Plug it into the equation. Thank you, Drew. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Nice. There you go. You plug it into the function. Function, remember, is this thing that you put stuff into and you get stuff out of. All right? I'll make this point as many times as necessary because. But one of the most important things that you understand in this graph is what the very basic definition of what a graph is. If I want to know what the y value is, I need to plug in the x value to the function. Right? So if I want to know where the point is, like do I plot a point up here or do I plot a point down here? Does the graph go up like this or does the graph go down like this? Like I want to find that out. If I want to find that out, I plug in something or x. Uh, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, whatever. Okay, let's do negative 7. Let's see where we're supposed to put the, the point vertically when x is negative 7. So again, we're going to square x. We're going to multiply 4 times x. x in this case is negative 7. What's negative 7 squared? Um, oh. Four to six, please. No, not 14. Positive 49. 49. Oh, right, not times 2. Yes. Uh, and 
Four times negative seven. There you go. So 49 minus 28. 21 plus three. 24. 24, just like when we put in positive three. So at negative seven, I would have to plot the point at 24. That's really high. Right? It seems like the points, the outputs, are getting higher and higher and higher. Bigger and bigger numbers for the outputs. As I put in more and more negative numbers, do you think that trend will continue, or do you think that we'll start to get, you know, we'll get to 24 and we'll start to come back down and get um, yeah, outputs I like 23, 21, 7? Do you think it'll keep going up? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Now, whether or not it keeps going up forever, or if it does eventually come back down and start to get outputs that are smaller, say, than 24, we don't have to worry about that too much. Okay. But I hear, I'm hearing some guesses that. If at negative seven we get to 24, I'm just gonna point my arrow up there and just kind of guess that it keeps going that way, right? If I wanna find out more about it, I need to find out more about this kind of a function, which we will do later. Uh, or I need to keep plotting, you know, keep plugging in more and more negative numbers, negative 20, negative 50, negative 100. Do the numbers, do the outputs keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger? If they do, then I feel pretty confident that they'll keep doing that forever. But, like, like I said, this little bit right there, that's all you did, that's, that's good work. You put in the correct thing, you got the correct uh, output, plotted the points in the correct place on the graph, and you have a good idea of what the graph is starting to look like. And you know, what this thing to be pointy. As Mikhail said, it's, it's not gonna go straight from here to there, we're gonna put the, the, the curve where we think the points are gonna be. It's just gonna be a smooth transition, right? As you, you put in one half, and then you put in something that's slightly bigger than one half, and something that's slightly bigger than that, and slightly bigger than that, it's going to be a smooth transition, not a jagged one. I'm going to shoot down to <coughs> negative one and shoot up to it doesn't, right? It's going to be a nice smooth transition, yeah? Um, if it, because it wants to that the curve at the bottom, wouldn't it eventually do that again? You think it would eventually do that again? Yeah. That's a good yeah. idea. We. Whether or not it does that, we have to maybe leave for another day, because it's, what we really want to just understand is that when we put something in, we get something out, and that's all the graph is keeping track of, okay? Yeah. Dimitri? Wait, I think I have an explanation for why it did the, kind of the, you know, the U. Okay. I think it was because it was zero, and zero is neutral, that the farther up you go, you keep going up, and the farther down you go, you keep going up, because you got by the, the square, so it's, Close you are to neutral, the lower you go, but then the farther away from neutral, the higher you go. It needs to make more sense. Right here, like this is neutral? Yeah. And then as you go here, you get bigger numbers, and as you go this way, you get bigger numbers? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, theory. I like the theory, yeah. I think it, it's, I like it might be a little hard to follow, I think, which is, I see what you're saying. Uh -huh. um, yeah, there is a uh, kind of a neutral place in this function where um, yeah, where, where we basically get the smallest output we can possibly get out of this function. Nice. Okay? We dial x in there just right so that we actually get the lowest point, the lowest, the smallest output we can possibly get. And once we get beyond that, once we get to the left or the right of that particular x value, yeah, we are going to go up on either side. Yeah, not, not all functions are that way. Not all graphs are that way. Some graphs are. Lines. Some graphs are these called parabolas. Some graphs are these wavy things forever in both directions. They just keep going up and down and up and down and up and down. It's called the sine wave or uh, any number of shapes depending on which function we're talking about. Now, a more like convincing argument of why this goes up on both sides, we'll talk about this another time. But if right now you understand that we can plot points by plugging in x values and getting the y values. That's all the points represent. I put in this x and we got this y. At some point, we just have to stop plotting points because we can't do this forever. We don't have an eternity to do this, right? right? So then when we draw that curve, we're just guessing at where all of those infinity points are going to land. That's mm -hmm. all that is. Okay. So I'm guessing in between my points, where those points are going to land, and then I'm guessing past the last point that I can plot what it's going to keep. Kind of outputs I'm going to keep getting. 
That's, that's what we're guessing at there. Okay? So I know it was a long discussion, but it's an important one. And if you're paying attention, and I hope it makes more sense than it did before. All the graph is doing is saying, you put this in, and you got this out. It's saying the same thing as this table is saying. This table says you put in one, you got out eight, and this point is saying you put in one, and you got out eight. So the graph, you can see, you can see a picture of how this function acts. Ryan, Justin? Yeah. Theoretically, since you only actually plot like six out of like an infinity, yep. like your like the percent that's actually accurate would be really small. Uh, I would agree with you, but also, can you explain more why you, why you say that? Because, like, you know that, like, the six or so are correct. The ones that we actually, like, put yeah. dots on, okay. But when you kind of connect the rest, uh -huh. you basically guess. Like, yes, you are guessing. Okay. And, I mean, we're not supercomputers, the best we can do, a computer's gonna do better, because it's actually gonna pl like plug in just thousands, maybe millions of different x values and get all those y values, get all those points and plot them all. Uh, or at least it can tell you where that point would be, right? Yes. Okay. Um, let me see if I can show you what a how a calculator thinks. If I put this function in here, uh, x squared plus 4x plus 3. And I look at its graph. No surprise, it looks like the graph we have over here. It looks like a something. That's cool. Well, here's the thing. This calculator is not an infinite thing. It's a finite thing. Right? So it's doing the same thing we're doing. It's, it's plotting like a select number of points and it's connecting. It's just that the points that it's plotting is like 100, 1,000 of this. Let's, you plot 100 points on the screen, you're gonna get something that almost looks connected already. And then it's just gonna connect those. But if you put in a certain value, like if I ask it, well, what would I get when I put in 0.5? It can tell me exactly, 5.25. And I guess a six isn't that far off. And if I put in negative 0.5, 1.25 is really oh It can crunch those numbers really fast. Oh. That, oh, like, I just kind of want to question, like, kind of what Ryan said, like, yeah. how said that the percentage we, like, get correct is really small, but, like, no matter what, it won't always be small, because, like, infinity is so huge that, like, well, yeah, because it just never ends. That, yes, like, the, that's, that's very true, because, because there's so many, infinity's so big that no matter how big of a graph you graph, and no matter how many points you plot, no matter how many inputs and outputs you get, the percentage that are correct once you draw that guess of a graph, percentage is actually right on, is gonna be really low, because infinity is just so big. Um, in fact, uh, maybe we'll watch a video later, but there's an argument to be made okay. that almost all numbers, Almost all numbers, and all of the numbers, all infinity numbers, have the number three in them. Ooh. Almost all of them. Yeah. Um, okay. Just about 100% of numbers have the three in them. Okay. Now here's the, here's the thing. If almost all numbers have a three in them, we're talking about the percentage of numbers that have a three in them, right? Almost 100%. Well, can we say the same thing about five? Seven, like nine? One doesn't have a three in it. I don't think right, one doesn't, but three does, thirteen does, twenty-three does, and thirty does, and thirty-three does. Right? And forty-three, and fifty-three, and sixty-three, and thirty-four, all the thirties. Thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. So there's a thing. But if we keep looking at that and we keep expanding out, and we keep looking at all of the numbers with just billions of digits, eventually, the percentage of numbers that have a three digit in them nears one hundred percent. It's, it's just a property of infinity. Property of infinity. 
Well, we'll look at it maybe a little bit later. Can't you? So yeah, that's right. just like saying two. Like, I mean, two is in like 50% of the numbers. Two is in almost 100% of the numbers. They're wrong. Well, I mean, like, that's just between zero and 100, but between zero and everything. Every number. What about zero? Like, what about zero? Yeah. Like, how many numbers is it in? Yeah. Almost 100. I feel like we're a little more. Yeah. Like, because if you did like zero, nine, zero, eight, zero, seven. Zero, zero. <laughs> Think of it that way, you don't need to. Okay. So, wait, how would you prove it? I'll show you later. But it's just a property of infinity. That, like, no matter how big the graph, no matter how many points you plot, the percentage of ones that are exactly accurate is going to be almost zero percent. Because infinity is so big. Okay? Well, uh, this is slightly related, but uh, it's kind of a little basic sort of number. It's really big, uh, high. Uh -huh. Like people, like say, people yeah, I see it all the time, but like, uh, how do people like come up with it? Because I mean, like, you know, anyone could make a number that big. You know, just uh -huh. H by two six. You know, like, uh -huh. is there an equation that made it, or like? It's a good question. We'll have to. Hi, we're gonna have to get done with this stuff. Okay. And we don't have anything new to learn. It's going to be a review day, so I can answer a question like that or okay. about how well, do all digits, almost all digits, have three and then five and then. All right, this is kind of off topic, but why does everything have a mathematical equation? Like, what do you mean everything? Well, I just like hear about like, for example, like I just hear about like certain like phrases having a. Oh, like just having a mathematical. I'm getting confused now. I think. It's I don't know. Um. That's a tough question to answer. I mean, you can, as far as words go or phrases, you have to take the words or the phrases, the letters, whatever, assign numbers to them in some way, and then you can make that data fit something. I could code something. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe in numerology. You know. I'm sorry. That's all right. But it's, yeah. That's what you do. You just kind of assign numbers to things that you want the numbers to be assigned to, and then you make that pattern, where we want to see uh, patterns, we'll see. Anyway, um, it's a good discussion. The thing that we need to know, though, at least is that this graph is just representing if I put in this number, I'm going to get out this number, right? If I put in, this is an approximation here, if I put in negative one, two and a half, two and a half, negative two and a half, I'm going to get something pretty close to negative one, right? And not something like five. I'm not going to get five and a half. And that shape is just a guess at where all of your points are. Do you have a question about one of the other ones? Good guess? Can we pause and be over? Two questions. Okay. So just remember, I want to know what a graph looks like. Plug in X. Plug in something for X, anything you want. Plug this in, figure out what the output is. Something else in, figure out what the output is. Until the points start to take some kind of a shape. And just guess that that's the shape that the graph is going to be. All right, at this point, that's all we need to do. We'll go, like, as, as we move on, we'll start with the easiest graphs possible. Why? To really understand it. Huh? To really understand it. To learn. Really so I mean, that's the goal, so that we understand it. You know, these kinds of functions. They'll have inputs and outputs such that their graph will be a straight line. These kinds of functions will have inputs and outputs such that they will have this graph called a parabola. Right. Certain classes of functions have certain shapes. That's the kind of that's where we're going to transition. And then we're going to break it down. How do we find certain points that make these graphs easy to draw? For now, put it in an X, get out a Y, do that a few times, four or five times, until the points in the plot seem to start to make shapes. So that you're pretty sure that all of the points that you could plot are just going to fall right in here. Brilliant. Do you have any questions before the review? Mm -hmm. Good discussion. I think it could have been a little tighter. I'm just worried about other things. That's okay. Let's pass it in the homework, please. similar to the one we just did.
as a, as a homework question. True? I'm supposed to trade papers. Yes. Is it trade papers? So you get one squared is one minus two plus one. Wait, I don't. Um, so you don't have the same numbers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Table's different. All righty, okay. I was okay. like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry, Okay, so negative two, negative one, zero, and one. Yeah, like what a freaking formation Okay, well, still zero and still one. I'm gonna, we'll do negative 2. So we'll just forget about that and we'll change it to a negative 2. Wait. Yep. Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, so this is 0. Okay? 1 minus 2 plus 1. This is 0. And then we'll put a negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So plus 4 plus 1. Nine. It's not our class, so we don't need to be doing that. Okay. Negative one, four. Zero, one. One, zero. Negative two, nine. points that we have, we're making like a half of a U. So let's just plug in three because we can do that. We can plug in anything we want. Questions? Should, should I give him a five then? Uh, I would give it a four because some of the points are 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 weird. Okay. So here's here's three. This actually just happens to be here. So we'll do three. Three squared minus two times positive three plus one. Nine minus six plus one. As three plus one is four. Yeah. So three, four. Oh, yeah. That's the, the, the person that Drew's grading for. That's what they got. That's correct. Okay. So. Um, if we were to look between say one and three, and guess at where the outputs are going to be. You think they're going to be down here? 
No, no, no. Not because between between three and four we get outputs between zero and or th sorry one and three we get outputs between zero and four. And probably we're gonna get some outputs along this path here. And if we keep going, we see the, the outputs continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger forever. And also in the other direction, bigger and bigger forever. Now, again, if they just used the, the table that I gave you, that's negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, and they got just this shape, well, that's good. That's good. That's useful. We want to go beyond that later on, but right now that's good. So if that's what they have, let's call it good. That's her. Stop. You're a team. Stop. Stop. Any questions about that one? Simplify the expression, and we're going to say that it's combined like terms. Can I do uh, 8x to the fifth? No. They're not like terms. Not like terms at all. They're not like terms unless they have the same variables, exactly the same power. Negative 2. So you have to combine 3x to the third. Uh, this one plus 5x. This one. Negative 5x. Negative 2x to the third. It's 5x squared minus 9. Okay. We want to talk about this a little bit more. Okay. We actually want to understand this. Not just that we can't do it, but why can't we not do it? Right. If I can't add 3x to the third plus 5x squared, and get 8x to the fifth, we have to, we'd like to understand why that is. Why doesn't it? So let's, let's just take off to the side here, x to the third plus x squared. Not 3x to the third and 5x squared, but just x to the third and x squared. You might want this to go together and get x to the fifth. No. Look, this class takes forever because I don't know why you guys feel like you should turn around and talk to each other and chat about things that aren't what I'm talking about. If you have a question that I'm not answering, ask me. Otherwise, don't worry about what the other person's marking. I'm here to quiz. I will be marking it myself. So make sure to be fair. Okay? Let's all pay attention. I know we've been here for a while, but we would have been taking breaks. It would have been a lot nicer if we had been on task the whole time. But we haven't, so we're pushing through. It's taking forever. We're not even going to get done before class is over, maybe? Let's really, let's focus. I know it's the end of the day, I know it's a hot day. We're trapped in this room together. So if you stay on task, then we can take little breaks. Okay? Mental and physical breaks, but if you keep taking those breaks on your own, those breaks are just spent talking to each other and me trying to get you to pay attention. That's how we spend the break time. Okay, let's not do that. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about why these two sides of the equation aren't equal. That's why I have slashes that are not equal. On this side, what does x to the fifth mean? X times 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 x is addition, this is multiplication, this word. Multiplying, all the five x's multiplying together. Here, are, there are five x's, there's some multiplication in there, we're adding. Oh, it's so totally different, you cannot add these together, it's not x to the fifth, it's not two x to the fifth, it's not anything except for x cubed plus x squared. That's as far as it goes. So you plug a number in there for x, there's nothing to do. There's no, there's no simplifying to do. Looking for like terms, we're looking for exponents that have, or, or sorry, variables that have the same exponent. All right. Let's do the next one. Let's do 
basically the similar thing, distribution for the sign like search. In particular, this is what I want to see how we did. There's a negative and there's an X that we're supposed to distribute. Did we do that correctly? Well, here we're multiplying by 5. So I get 5X plus 15. Perfect. Keep in mind, the stuff that we are, like this stuff and this stuff are being added together. Add the negative. Add negative three x times blah blah blah. So we do plus whatever comes next. All right. So what are we, we going to get? Negative three x times two. What's that? Negative six. Negative six x. So plus a negative six. Uh, negative three x times negative x. No. Three x squared. Three x plus three x squared. Oh, no what? Oh, I thought you were asking us, will it be? Oh. Three, negative three. It will not. You're right. It'll be positive. Negative times negative is positive. And the x times x is x squared. I think next time we come in, we're going to have a little proceeding chart. Seems like necessary. Action to take. Okay, we, so we're going to look at this expression and see if there's any like terms. The like terms of 3x squared is, is just x squared. But there are some x terms, multiple x terms. We got five of them here. We take away six from that, we get negative x, negative one x plus fifteen. All right. One more, I think. Or not? No, no, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Out of fifteen. 